Can we welcome Pastor Dan? Yeah. Bless you, mate. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thank you. So good. Thanks, team. Beautiful. All right. I'm going to start my timer because we we got some ground to cover this morning. Are you ready? This is week two on spiritual gifts. I'm going to pray real quick and then we are getting into it and you need to hold on. All right. So Lord, uh, we pray, Father, that you would be powerfully at work as we come to Your Word, as we learn this morning. Holy Spirit, we pray that You would be bringing revelation, that there would be a seal on this, God, that it is more than human, that You are speaking in power through Your Word into our hearts. And in the process, we're being transformed and empowered for the works that You have for each one of us. No one misses out, Lord. So we receive in Jesus' Name. Amen. Amen. All right. Are you ready? If you are a note taker and you probably need to be today, uh, I'm attempting to kind of do a bit of a masterclass introduction to spiritual gifts. All right. I do not recommend doing this in two messages, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay. So if you missed last week, here were the take homes from last week really quickly. Number one, the gifts are for every believer. This is great news. No one misses out. It doesn't matter how inadequate you think you are. It doesn't matter um, how terrible you think you are at most things. The gifts are for every believer. If you are a follower of Jesus, you are gifted. Turn to the person next to you and just say, I'm gifted. Okay, just let them know. All right. Number two, the gifts help build up the church. God has a plan and a purpose for the gifts. They build up the church. How do we know what they're not what we don't want to do? We don't want to tear down. They are for building up. All right. Number three, we're called to desire the gifts. Now, this is the challenging one. This is the call in scripture that we are called to actually desire the gifts because of God, what God wants to do through them. All right. And here was the challenge last week. This is the big challenge is that your calling, what God has for you, is beyond your ability. Oh, well, that's not great news. God actually wants it that way because we are required to do it in His power and His strength. We're required to lean into Him. And when we do, and we do it His way, He gets the glory. It's not how wonderful am I, how amazing am I, even though God's the one who's gifted me. It's look at how great God is. Okay? So that's the short version. Uh, You don't have to go and watch that message now. (laughs) The problem is we attempt to do it without God all the time. Every day, there is this battle for us in doing it our way, in our strength or with God's help. And we're on a journey, every one of us, of learning what does it look like to live and move in the power of God's Spirit. And we're all in different places there. But let me say this when it comes to spiritual gifts. Um, This is serious time. I believe that one of the problems that the church faces today is powerless Christianity, is that we've brought it down to this human ability, human strength, faith, right? And God never intended it for it to be that way. And so we have this epidemic where we have churches full of people who are living a form of powerless Christianity, Right, And this is actually a really big problem. So what we do then is we celebrate human ability, human giftedness, rather than celebrating where we see the power, where we see the breath of God at work. Right? If I could rant for a second this morning, um, I really believe that at some point in time, what was celebrated and valued shifted from the presence of God 
to a polished performance, right? To what was visually pleasing, to what we responded well with. And we started to clap and applaud those things. Leaders started to realise that they could do those things and get the praises of people. And there was a shift We started to think that to be seeker sensitive, to see people come into the kingdom, we needed to do those things really well. And so they became the things that seemed to be valued more than God's presence and God's way. I would say that leaders and pastors have a lot to answer for because they've held on to power, they've held on to pride and They've held on to control rather than fulfil their role of equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. And I say, I know this is heavy, right? Um, I don't know how long I've been a leader for now. I've seen your pastor for 11 or 12 years. Um, I'm not really too fast anyway, but I think that makes me qualified enough to bring an apology on behalf of pastors and church leaders who have squashed things, who have shut down the work, who maybe have not acknowledged your gifting, the call of God on your life and not been active in empowering you to actually step into the fullness of everything that God has for you. Unfortunately, this has come out of a place of fear for many leaders. They have a fear um, as deep down as it may be, as hidden as it may be, that if they empower the saints, then things will get out of control. And how are they going to control all this crazy stuff that God's doing? They also have a fear that many will not voice that they may actually see people raised up who are more gifted than them and then they get worried that they'll be pushed out of the way. The problem with this is that I believe the definition of a great leader is to raise up people who far exceed their own abilities, right? This is something that we need to be praising and celebrating rather than just an atmosphere of faith that appears to be really well under control. So here's a rule book. If you want things to be nice, polished, under control, Don't focus on this message where every one of us is called to be empowered and active in the calling of God on your life. If you want to see God do amazing things and His kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, then start speaking into every believer being empowered to do great things in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I hope you can receive that and I particularly want you to receive that if you are someone who is aware that there's a calling on your life and you've been in an environment where you have just been shut down. I do want to say this, that the church where is the place that God intends for the spiritual gifts to be outworked the most is bigger than the local church. So some leaders have tried to give you the idea that your gifting must be used here, right? And there's been some angst and frustration maybe even if you have a gifting that's not used in the local church. When Paul refers to the building up of the church, he is not limiting that to the local church. He is referring to the church. The church is the body of believers. That is globally every believer coming together. So we've got hands in Africa, feet in Australia. This is the body of Christ and He is the head. And so there are times where you're going to be called, your gifting is going to be used outside of this local church. Here at Hope Community, I can promise you, we will do our best to celebrate that and to encourage you to do that. That's a wonderful thing. As leaders, How exciting is it to think that we could empower the saints for ministry and we see an impact that goes far beyond this place here at Hope Community. Wonderful. So much so, if we don't have enough kids leaders, okay, but people are off doing this, people are off doing that, amazing. We'll live with that. Is that cool? All right. But we always need some help, okay? Like just don't. (laughs) You're already thinking, oh, I've been let off the hook. 
One thing that I love about Hope Community, I do wanna say this as well, is that I think we are attempting to do this. I'm not saying we get it right. I'm not saying we're perfect at this. One thing I love is that I can come into any gathering at Hope Community and I can grab one person out of at least 50 and I can say to them, hey, could you pray for me today and maybe even give me a prophetic word and they will do an amazing job of that. They have been trained, equipped, raised up. And so in terms of superstars, we've got a whole church full of superstars when it comes to being active in their gifts. And I think that's an amazing thing. Something that I'm really proud of here at Hope Community. So we've had years of a lack of teaching. We've had years of shutting things down. And now we face an epidemic of powerless Christianity. And the problem is that our world needs an encounter with Jesus. Um, Not just some amazing people, but they need to meet God. They need to see God. And the great thing is that God's plan for people to be able to do that is to use people such as you and I. This is God's plan. So this is why Paul in in 1 Corinthians 2, he says this, When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. So Paul had the same concerns with the church way back then that the followers of Jesus could be easily distracted by human ability and they could miss what needed to be happening in the power of God. Isn't that interesting? That was a long time ago. So the point is, we need to get this worked out. Every single one of us needs to get this worked out and we need to be stepping into the fullness of everything that God has for each one of us. Now, let me change gears a little bit. Last week, I gave you the opportunity to do some homework and take a spiritual gifts test. Um, I'm not going to ask who did their homework, okay? So I just know that. Uh, Did anyone do it and find it helpful? I'll ask that. Okay, that's good. Okay, a few people. Uh, Did anyone do it and find some surprising answers? Yes, yes, definitely. Ah, okay. Well, that's good. Now, I just want to, I want to rewind because what I'm really looking at is starting at the very foundation of things and we're going to build up so that we can answer as many questions as possible here today. So if we jump to the screen, I want to take you to this first passage where we see our spiritual gifts come from. And I want to just build a bit of a list, okay? If you're wondering what are these about, where do they appear in Scripture? Firstly, Romans 12, we see prophesying, serving, teaching, encourage, giving, leading, mercy. Let's jump to the next one, 1 Corinthians 12, a message of wisdom, message of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, miraculous powers, prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. The second part of 1 Corinthians 12, apostles, prophets, teachers, miracles, healing, helping, guidance, different kinds of tongues, uh, same again. Next one is First Peter 4, where we see speaking and serving. All right, so this is most of the text in the New Testament. Now, when we collate all those things, here is a list of the spiritual gifts as they appear in Scripture. So maybe you didn't do your homework, but this is a good reference point to maybe even just look through this list and think, Do I feel strong or does anything in this list stand out to me? It may be one, two, three things that I think maybe that could be my spiritual gift. 
All right, that can be a starting point for people who are starting to explore this. But as I said, I want to quickly address some of the questions around spiritual gifts. I know this is going to be a bit teachy, just hang in there with me, okay? Um, And the first question that often comes out of looking at something like this is, are there more gifts than what is mentioned in Scripture? And stay with me here. Some people are going to have a heart attack. I would say yes, there are, all right? Ooh, I know. Uh, One of the reasons is that I see gifts at work in the church that are not mentioned in Scripture. So gifts like intercession, uh, everyone can pray, but intercessors have this deep burden at times to pray for specific things and specific people. Any intercessor will know, even to the point where you get woken up in the night and you just know, I have to pray. Yes, all the intercessors are like, that's me. Okay, another example is deliverance. Um, Every Christian, every follower of Jesus has authority over evil. But some people just have this ability. Some people are more effective than others when it comes to seeing people set free in Jesus' name. Another gift, I would say, is hospitality. Uh, We're called to offer hospitality, but some people are just next level at hospitality, right? You know when you're at their house and food just appears? (laughs) Like, it's like it was just prepared and it just appears People with the gift of hospitality are often strongly generous people as well. They will pour out, they will honour very well and sometimes it can be quite humbling being in the presence of those people. So they're just some examples but another reason that I believe that there are more spiritual gifts is because I don't believe that Paul was attempting to give us an exclusive, exhaustive list of the spiritual gifts in Scripture. He was referring to them, but as he was referring to the gifts, he was actually making other points. His point was not at any time, I want to give you a list of all the gifts and you must all fit into this space perfectly. Okay? Here's the truth. The Holy Spirit can empower people for all sorts of things. If we move from the Old Testament back to the New Testament, there was this guy named Bezalel who was empowered to help with the tabernacle. All the creative people here, have a listen to this. Exodus 31, Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I've filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood and to engage in all kinds of crafts. This was empowering by the Holy Spirit in this creative sense. Is that cool or what? Some of the creatives, you're like, that's me, empowered by the Holy Spirit to be creative, okay? So here's one of the tensions I know is that you might look at a list like what we had up there and you might think I don't fit into that, but you might have a sense that I do have a gift that's not on this list. Um, I just want to give this caution. We have to still be careful that if we're going to identify a gift and if we're going to really attempt to be active in that gifting, that it still conforms to Scripture and the purposes that God has. So primarily it will be for the building up of the church, for the building up of you personally, um, or for fulfilling the calling that God has on your life. If it doesn't fit into that, it's probably not a spiritual gift. All right? And can I just say, the gift of criticism is not a spiritual (laughs) gift. Okay? Let's just get this clear. Some people just feel like, Oh, it's just my calling to be, okay, it's not on the list and I'm sure it's not in there anyway. All right, let's just get that straight. Let me keep moving. Another question that people have often around spiritual gifts is how many gifts can someone have? Um, 
there's been this thought for a long time now is that people can only have one spiritual gift. I'm not really sure where this understanding has come from. Maybe it comes from 1 Corinthians 12, 7, where it says to each one, a manifestation of the Spirit is given. So it seems like it's using singular language. Um, But it doesn't actually mean that you can only have one gift. It just means that every follower gets a gift, at least one gift. Okay? So if it doesn't say explicitly in Scripture, then we need to look at what's implied in Scripture and then we need to look at examples within Scripture. So if we look at Paul, we will see that Paul had a whole heap of spiritual gifts, okay? Apostleship, prophecy, teaching, healing, words of knowledge, speaking in tongues. He says he speaks in tongues better than any of us. Uh, Miracles, evangelism, encouragement. They're just a few if you start to really look at Paul and his ministry. Now, I know that some people might look at someone like Paul and say, well, he was like special, right? Like God was using him powerfully. Yes, he was, but it was the same Holy Spirit that empowered Paul that empowers us. And so there's, no, there's nothing to say that we cannot be um, gifted with many gifts also or more than one gift. Are you still with me? All right. Another question, even talking with someone about this this morning, can your spiritual gifts change with time? I want to bring just a little bit of teaching into this space. Scripture shows us that there are three layers of spiritual gifting. Personal gifts, everyday gifts and assignment gifts. All right. Personal gifts is where the Holy Spirit distributes gifts to each one. These often stand out to us as strengths or capacities or passions in our life. Um, Some people might say, look, I just have a huge amount of faith. I don't know why, I just seem to have more faith than other people. Some people are just really good at encouraging. Have you ever noticed that? If I give an encouragement, it might fall flat. If they give an encouragement, it's like someone's just received the best thing ever. So-and-so said this, it's amazing. You're like, I said that to you two minutes ago. Some people uh, are just really good at knowing things when they see systems and organisation things. And I just want to give a shout out to the administrators. We love you. Uh, They're just really good at that stuff, all right? They're personal gifts. Then we have the everyday gifts. Uh, So we have the presence of the Holy Spirit within us. The Holy Spirit has access to all the gifts, which means we have access to all the gifts. The everyday gifts are not our personal gifts, but they're gifts that we can access at times when we need them. So they might be outside our gifting, but still available because of the Holy Spirit. So you might find yourself in a situation where you need a certain gift to see God glorified in that moment. And there can be access to that gift, all right? I want to give you an example of this. Uh, How many people have seen the Jumanji movies, okay? Yes, great. I'm not recommending them necessarily, okay? I can't remember if they're good or dodgy or what. Um, Anyway, in the movie, each character gets these special abilities and at least one of the characters even has this backpack. And the backpack's got all these special things in it. Like, it's imaginary, right? They're not really in there. But when he needs those things, they're there. So I want to picture you with this backpack on. And at the beginning of the adventure, the Holy Spirit puts some things in your hands. These are your personal giftings, okay? Uh, If you're a leader, it might be a compass. Here's a compass so that you can know where to go and lead people really well, okay? Um, it might, I don't know what else it could be. Get imaginative with this, all right? Um, so you're going through this massive adventure 
and you find yourself, there's this action scene in a movie and you're trapped inside this building and there's this locked door in front of you and you realise we need to get through that door now, right? But my compass is not much good now. It tells me we need to go that way, but it's not going to smash down this door. So what do you do? You reach into your backpack. And as you reach into your backpack, something falls into your hands. It's the handle of the sledgehammer. And out of the pack, backpack, you pull the sledgehammer. You smash down the door and you save the day. Okay, are you with me? This is what it's like to have access to the everyday gifts. There will be times where God will allow you to operate in those gifts to see His glory come into those moments. They're really cool times. I want you to know that. But there's more. There's assignment gifts. So these are gifts where the Holy Spirit empowers you for certain assignments that God has for you. They're outside of your ability and they're for a limited time or season. Okay? So we wouldn't be called to desire the gifts if it was all set in stone, right? Because it's a done deal. Why would we bother desiring them if things can change? So... I'll give you an example of this. 1 Timothy 4.14 says, Do not neglect your gift which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid hands on you. So this is Paul reminding Timothy, who's a young church leader, uh, of the time he was prayed for by the elders as he went into ministry. They prophesied over him and the Holy Spirit gave him a new gift for the new season. Okay, another example of this, if we go back to Old Testament, once again, we still see spiritual gifts at work. Moses, God calls Moses to lead the people out of Egypt. God activates the gift of miracles, working of miracles in Moses. Moses stands before Pharaoh. He reaches into his cloak. He pulls it out. His hand, his arm is covered with leprosy. That's a pretty cool trick. Puts it back in pulls it out again, it's healed, it's gone. That's a miracle, right? There's another time uh, he, he's standing before Pharaoh. He says to Aaron, throw your staff down on the ground. He throws it onto the ground and it turns into a snake. That's a pretty cool miracle right there as well. Then it gobbles up some other snakes. It's really cool. <laughs> that is an assignment gifting. God empowers Moses for his plans and purposes in that season of time, all right? The great news about this is that if God is calling you to it, he will empower you for it. We stress, we feel like we're inadequate. Moses said to the Lord, not me, send someone else. If God's calling you to it, then he will empower you for it. So the big question is, let me kind of try and land the plane. Um, How do you know what your spiritual gifts are? Well, the spiritual gift test may be a help, okay? But the best way to find out is simply to serve God, is to lay your life down and as you do that, see what happens. Take notice of things, okay? I want to give you some examples of this today. I want to introduce you to this guy. His name's Michael. And Michael is on the coffee cart at Hope Community. After two weeks on the coffee cart, Michael could see that the workflow needed tweaking and they could make four more coffees every minute if they did that. Michael also thinks that the payment system is terrible and needs a major upgrade. Michael sounds like an administrator. I want to introduce you to Dave. Dave serves on the coffee cart. Dave loves being on coffee because he gets to have so many conversations about Jesus. God just opens up the doors. And last Sunday, Dave led someone to the Lord while he made them a double shot almond latte extra hot. (laughs) Dave sounds like he has the gift of evangelism. This is Shawnee. Shawnee serves on the coffee cart. Shawnee loves being on coffee because God keeps giving her words of knowledge for people. So then she prays for them and all sorts of miracles happen. Sounds like Shawnee has the gift of words 
of knowledge. Are you getting my point here? We just need to go. We need to go where God's calling us to. And as we go, things will start to stand out to us. God will highlight our giftings for us. Okay, my encouragement to anyone who is wondering about their giftings, the calling that God has on your life, find opportunities, say yes to invitations. One of the best things you can do. Over time, you will start to identify how God has wired you up, how God has gifted you. Now, I want to give some don'ts here, okay? Don't compare your gift to someone else's. Be faithful to the gifts that God has given to you. Don't try and put the gifts in order of best to worst, okay? Every gift is needed. Every gift is important in the kingdom. Don't despise your gift. If you struggle with your calling, I want you to hear this. You are very normal. God will help you, but don't despise your gifting. Don't attach personal value to your gift. This is a risky space. You are not your gift, okay? Uh, Too many people find value and identity in their giftings and then they leave their character unattended. You have to be careful that you don't base your value on your gifts because if you do that, you will probably do that to other people also you'll start to value them based on their gifting and their abilities. Don't let your gift outgrow your character. Your character needs to be able to grow with your gifting. If you wanna keep your character in check, have specific people who have permission to speak into your life and ask the tough questions. If you wanna fly solo, it's a risky, risky space. And at some point, your character's gonna bring you undone. Doesn't matter how strong your gifting is. Final one is this, don't forget that it's actually all about love. When we look in 1 Corinthians, we see the gifts talked about in 1 Corinthians 12 and then 1 Corinthians 14. And in between we find 1 Corinthians 13, funny that, a chapter about love. And often people think that this chapter is all about relationships, but really it's about the context of spiritual gifts. It's sandwiched in there. So this is what Paul says, if I speak in tongues of men or angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Don't forget that even in our spiritual gifts, it's all about love. So I wanna invite you to jump on your feet and I just wanna finish with this encouragement when it comes to the use of gifts. This is what Scripture has to say to us, Romans 12. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. 1 Peter 4, each of you should use 
whatever gift you've received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. This is our calling. Be active, be diligent, give it everything that you have. If we can grow in this, if we can work this out, if we can empower a generation, then we will see breakthrough. There will be salvations. There will be miracles. There will be prayer in workplaces. There will be an economical impact. There will be a social impact. There will be new churches planted. There will be new businesses started. There will be new leaders raised up. There will be a demonstration of God's glory and power. Amen. Amen. All right, let's sing out, declare it this morning.